What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Today I'm doing part four of my overrated and overpriced whiskeys. So, everyone knows how much I love Macallan. Um, it's quite obvious with several of the Macallan reviews that I've done, especially the Macallan Edition series. I love the one, I love the two, and I love the three. Unfortunately, my number six overrated and overpriced whiskey for this video is the Macallan Edition number four. With the new maker, Nick Savage, um, the new distillery, something got lost in translation. I feel like it's hanging out on the coattails of editions one, two, and three. And I think, in my opinion, and of course, I want to stress that it's just my opinion. There's a lot of people out there that love it. I think that you're, you're getting probably five to seven year old whiskey in that bottle and for the price which is anywhere between 90 us all the way to about 190 canadian it's just a little overpriced and definitely overhyped in my opinion number five is the springbank 18 year old now I love Springbank as well, and I'm, I think it's very important for me to bring these two to the table because I'm a huge McCallum fan and I'm a huge Springbank fan, but those are two that are just creeping up to the astronomical prices and the quality is just not there in my opinion. Um, if you compare it head to head with Longro, which is the exact same company, the Longro 18 is just more dynamic. It's got more going on. The Springbank 18, for whatever reason, just a little flat and falls short for me. And at nearly 300 Canadian, it's kind of out of the price range of most 18 year old whiskeys, which makes no sense to me because it just doesn't have the quality of some of the other ones that are out there. Number four is the Banahaven Pedro Jimenez finish. Now, a lot of people are falling over in their seats at this moment. Um, and probably just as shocked as the first two that I chose for this list. But at the secondary price of $450 Canadian, which is kind of what the going rate for those bottles is, I honestly think it's way overpriced. It's way overhyped. I think when you sit down with that whiskey and really weigh through the super sweet syrupy notes, you get this oaky sour note that's almost off-putting. Not quite off-putting, but it definitely lowers the grade quite a bit. And I think at north of 300 American, 400 Canadian, it's just nowhere near worth the price. Number three is the Amaru eight-year-old Greedy Angels. This whiskey is riding off the coattails for sure of its older siblings. There's a 12-year-old out there that's pretty much impossible to get and the prices are just astronomical. Um, the eight-year-old came out at around 350 Canadian depending on where you were buying it in Canada. It's more elsewhere, it's gone up since. It's nowhere near as good as everyone says it is. And of course, that's just my opinion, but for three to $400 Canadian, uh, more than that on the secondary market now, you honestly have to really break down that whiskey and say, what am I getting here? And am I able to enjoy the Amaro Fusion for a fraction of the price? just as much and I think the answer is yes. So because of that, uh, honestly guys, go out and grab that Amaru Fusion and ignore the astronomical prices of the Amaru eight-year-old Greedy Angels. Number two is a whiskey I got to try recently with my buddy Jeremy and although it was a very good whiskey, I do feel that because of Jim Murray, this whiskey kind of blew up to a category that it doesn't belong in and that's the Booker's Rye. This was a limited edition that Booker's put out and people just drove over each other to get it. And it's good stuff, don't get me wrong, it is good tasting rye. But the Michter's Toasted Barrel Rye, the Lock 40 Cast Strength, and some of the other fantastic ryes that I've had this year just absolutely show that this game is a marketing game. And when you have a big name attached to something, giving it a great mark, that's how sales are really driven. And it's unfortunate because it's good stuff, but it's been put in this unicorn category that really it doesn't belong in. So I've been meaning to get to this one for a while, and I should have included it in maybe my other videos, but I decided to save it for number one this time. It's the Glenfiddich 26-year-old. 
Now, this whiskey was originally listed near $1,300 at the LCBO. It was going for no less than $600 globally. Many places had it for around $700, $800. It's just mind-boggling where they came up with the price for this one. It's an ex-bourbon barrel, 26-year-old whiskey that's bottled at a low ABV. It's chill filtered. And frankly, it's nothing special aside from the fancy bottling and the fancy box. It's good whiskey. But when you equate the dollar amount to that whiskey, it is absolutely unreasonable. And for that reason, that one has to be the most overpriced whiskey I've ever come in contact with. Um, they've recently dropped the price of that whiskey at the LCBO to $700, and I wouldn't honestly pay half of that for that bottle. My opinion on that bottle has drastically changed over the years based on the amount of whiskeys that I've tried, based on the amount of 25 year old whiskeys I've tried, based on the amount of whiskeys that are much younger, much cheaper, and frankly, much better. So for that reason, Glenfiddich 26 year old is definitely the most overrated and overpriced on this video. The reason I do the overrated and overpriced videos is so that you guys, the consumer, can save some money. Hopefully, you can try before you buy. And if you decide you like the ones that I've listed, then that's great. It's your opinion after all. And if that's something you enjoy, then all the power to you. But if you're only going by someone's opinion, I hope to save you guys some money because the last thing I would want is for you guys to go out there and buy those whiskeys and be completely disappointed after spending all kinds of your hard earned cash. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you really like the video and you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. You guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You guys can also check me out on Patreon. And uh, if you like the channel quite a bit, then you can support me on there. Cheers.